the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Jeremiah chapter 2, chapter 9, we'll read from verse 23 and 24. The Bible tells us that the pride of the believer should be in knowing and understanding God. Here's what it says. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Read with me 24 if you are a believer. One, two, go. But let him that glory at glory in this, uh -huh, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Just stop there. This is the pride of the believer. That I understand and I know God. God can be known and he seeks to be known. Because your exploits and your capacity in this kingdom is based on that knowledge. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, where I quoted earlier, the Bible says, I, but I know whom I have believed, it says, and I am persuaded, persuaded, conviction, I am persuaded that he has an ability to keep whatever I've committed to him. But I know, it's not just but I have believed, but I know whom I have believed. I can believe someone who I do not know. Like Jesus was telling the woman by the well. He said, ye, um, how did he put it now? He said, ye worship what ye know not of. So it's possible to be involved in the ritual of worship and church and religiosity and not really know. You can even put your faith upon that unknown God as it happened to Paul. But it's one thing to have an encounter to say, I know this God. I know him. I know him. There are things I know about God. Nobody will ever attempt to dwindle my understanding about that. Unshakable. It is this knowledge of God that will help you to sieve through the maze of teachings and prophecies to know what is receivable and what is not. Are we together now? Yes, the knowledge of God is like a spiritual sieve. It will help you to edit the things that you can receive and the things to not receive. You will only receive the things that are consistent with his nature as revealed to you. It's important to know God. Matthew chapter 16 I want to be very simple tonight so that you will understand because this is a very, very important subject. Let's start from verse 13. Jesus was probing the disciples. He had walked with them for a number of years. They had seen the mighty things that he had done. They had participated in the miracle. And now Jesus wanted to probe their knowledge because he knew that very soon, listen, they were going to become the apostles of the Lamb. And that version of them would do a bad job. He needed to upgrade them through knowledge. And this is what he said. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, uh -huh, Whom do men say that, the son, that I the son of man am? You would think he already answered the question. You see that? Who do men say? And then some say that you are John the Baptist. Some Elias, others Jeremiah, or some just one of those prophets. Next verse. And then he says 15. But whom say ye that I am? And there was a moment of shocking silence. All of them stood there wondering, surprised themselves that they did not know him. They helped to multiply the bread. They helped to do a lot of things. Remember, they were part of his protocol system that stopped people from seeing Jesus. Yet, they did not even know who they were living with. Next verse. Simon Peter answered and said, I like Peter. Thou art Christ. Peter never said you are Jesus. What was he calling him before? You mean they never called him throughout the ministry? He had a name. There was a naming ceremony for him. Now, you expect Peter to say, look, 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 let's, let's stop playing games, Jesus. He said, no. 
you are not Jesus Jesus was the name given to your body when you walked in the earth but you are Christ Christ the son of the living God this is a very deep revelation because the God can be dead the son of a dead God is he alive so he said you are Christ the son of the living God Jesus marks the script now next verse 17 and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon son of Jonah or by Jonah for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you but my father which is in heaven and then he now said upon this rock I will build my church etc etc but the point is that they were walking with Jesus and you would think just because they saw the miracles they knew him now is it not amazing to go and preach about a man you do not know okay let's go and get people saved and born again and so what do you tell them sir i want to introduce someone to you and say who is that someone i need help in nigeria i hope he's the one you're talking about and then you say his name is jesus say, what do you mean jesus who is he say well i want to tell you he died for you did i ask him <laughs> what, what i mean what, what's he dying for me for because you are a sinner by what standard do you say i'm a sinner for all have sinned said who which parliament what basis did you use to let me tell you our world is not dull you need to know god to talk to men when you meet a poor and a struggling man he doesn't have the fortitude to ask you questions but when you want to meet men of influence you must be prepared to give an answer because you already made them successful and they are not born again so when you are bringing jesus to them the first question is what is it they are value driven they are used to receiving proposals from people so when you walk into the office they think jesus is one of those proposals and he says oh let, let's see the advantages like a business idea and then you are there crying and say my jesus he say please walk out of my office you need to give me a level of a depth of conviction i tell you this is why for many circles evangelism is poor it's not because the motion is not there the conviction the goer himself is not sure of both the message and the person who sent him so the moment you ask a question well, okay I will, I will go back and ask my pastor and come back but let me tell you this let me tell you this when the woman at the well without discipleship when she had an encounter with jesus by herself jesus didn't say go and call the rest she ran that means if you know god it should do something to you it has nothing to do with being an evangelist you will be too grateful to be silent come see a man she didn't even say come and see jesus yet the 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 force that was released from her conviction made people to say this woman is not used to doing this we better go and find out but the people that do know their god but the people that have met him enough to look at a family without rent and they say look let's leave this god and they say no 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 rent is too small i know god i know god i know god but the people that do know their god if we do not grow in this depth of certainty many believers will stop coming to church in the future do you know why because we have all kinds of teachings loitering the internet and loitering everywhere trying to demean jesus are we together now and i hope you know that many people have been successful especially financially without giving their lives to christ But I know whom I believe. It's important for the gospel to get to the ends of the earth. But we must stand from a standpoint of conviction. The average church member in many Christian circles has handed his life over to God. But does not know God. And I believe that it's been a burden in the heart of your pastor to use conferences like this. To open us up to know 
There are many of us in ministry here or called into ministry. It is important. When life challenges you, it's your conviction that will answer back. It's true. It's true. That's the reason why you can see someone, for instance, serve the Lord for many years, even serve as a pastor in a church, and then later on you see him and say, this got in, eh? we did it all. We did it and left it. You know, like elections, I was a senator, now I'm resting. And so they come and they make it look like you are just young. That's why. Keep doing this, your God thing. Respectfully so, you see some of our old folks. They will tell, when they see your zeal, they laugh and say, I remember 1960, we served God. Where didn't we preach? And now at that point, that man is sitting down as a traditionalist. No way. Not the God of heaven conviction based on the knowledge of God based on the knowledge of God based on the knowledge of God that I can trust God I know God is able to change my life I'm not guessing I'm not hoping I'm speaking from a realm of persuasion I may not have the evidence now to show but I know I know I know this God I know this God if he says he's coming he will come if he says I should wait for him I wait Are we together? You believe people based on your knowledge of them. The fact that faith is anchored on something supernatural does not mean it does not have a basis. Faith is based on revelation. There is something about God. Listen, let me tell you this. If I tell you right now that I'm going to, I, I think I've used this example before. If I tell you I'm going to buy you a phone, the first thing you do is look at me and instinctively find out whether I have the ability to buy that phone. If you think I'm rich enough to buy a phone, you believe quickly. If I tell you I'll buy a plane, you say it is well. Um, that it is well to mean, well, Apostle, I believe by faith, but I mean, I join you in that believing. I don't think that you have the money cash to buy me a plane. So when we doubt God, it's a message to him that God, I know you are seated in heaven, but I'm not exactly sure. I, I'm just using a polite way to tell you I don't believe you. So instead of verbalizing it, let my doubt speak to you that I'm not sure you can pay 250,000 naira. Are you that mighty? I'm not sure you are that powerful. Ah. And when a man looks at you, your boss looks at you and says, look, um, you will never rise in this office. There is something about God you know that his name is also the father of spirits. Every spirit is under his influence so he can influence the heart of a king like he did Pharaoh that the same boss that vowed to trouble you goes to bed my brothers and my sisters, like Nebuchadnezzar, he would not be able to sleep. He will wake up in the morning and the first call is from him. It's okay, we give up, come for the promotion. And you are wondering, sir, are you all right? And then there is something about God that gives you that confidence. Not that you go home and quarrel your wife and quarrel everybody and they say, what is wrong? And, and you know, you start, no. Stability through knowledge. When men say there is a casting down, you are not just keeping quiet because you are depressed. Uh -uh. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The knowledge of God gives value to faith. Otherwise, faith becomes like superstition. It becomes like a charm. Like you are concocting a charm and you are hoping it will work. Listen. Listen. You have studied the growth process of babies and children long enough. If you give birth to a child now, for some of us who have little babies now, what gives you the guarantee that that child will walk? The child has not walked. So you have faith that that child will walk. Is that true? But then there is a history. You have studied mankind long enough. You've had an encounter with this biological process. So that supports your faith. You know your child will walk. So you are not there anxiously watching and say, walk now. You can be patient and not even know when the child starts walking. Listen, the rate of high blood pressure 
depression, and all of these kinds of psychological diseases, they are not a medical condition. They are, they are the resultant effect of not knowing God. When you don't know God, you will worry. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't just say, I stop worrying just like that. No, there is something else that must give you confidence. I know God. I know him. I know him. I know him. I know. I know. I know that quarter to shame, he can arise. I know. I know. Ah, I know. I know. Ah, but you've been delayed. I know. I know. I should have had three children now. I know. But I know that God can still give triplets and compress eight years in nine months. I know. I know he can restore. So it gives me rest. My sister, there's one man. He's not exactly a man of God, but he's not a herbalist either. He can help you. And he said, no, no, no. I know. That knowledge gives you stability. Are we together now? Yes. Compromise is proof that you don't know God. That your knowledge of God has been exhausted and you have to outsource another support system. But the people, but the preachers, but the businessmen that do know their God, in Lagos, they shall be strong. In Nigeria, they shall be strong. It didn't say but the Yoruba people that know their God. It didn't say the Igbo people that do know their God. It didn't say the Hausa people that do know their God. It didn't say the Calabar people. It didn't even say the nationals that know their God. The people that do know their God. They shall be strong in any city and they shall do exploits in any city. They shall be strong. Capacity. Let me give you an equation. I wrote something down here. You'll notice I'm being very simple this night because I really want us to get it. I put a seven, one, two, three, four, five, a six step process here to knowing God. Number one, just you can put it this leads to this, leads to this, leads to that. Let me just do it quickly and then I'll explain. Number one, the first dimension I said is an encounter. Number two, an encounter leads to revelation. After an encounter, it is revelation. And then number three, revelation brings conviction. Conviction. Number four, conviction produces faith. Faith produces actions of obedience. And your action of obedience produces results. This is how it works. So it starts with an encounter. Then it leads you to revelation. Then revelation produces conviction. Then faith or belief if you want to write it. And then that belief gives you the platform to act in obedience. Actions of obedience. And then your action leads to results. This is how we get results in this kingdom. It starts with an encounter and ends with an awe-inspiring result. Encounter, revelation, conviction, faith, actions of obedience, results. This is the equation. If you want to excel in 2019, this is what you will need to pass through. An encounter. An encounter that means for instance if you want to prosper then there is a dimension of God you have to encounter when you encounter Jehovah Jireh there is something about that name you have that encounter it produces revelation of the principles contained within him to prosper you then it creates conviction now you can give if God tells you to empty your account, you are not wondering, will it happen? 
you can take a step of faith because it's from a standpoint of conviction. I tell you why the giving of many people never produces results. It is either for many people, not this circle at all, but for many people it's out of pressure and then for others it's out of religion. Yet for others it is even competition. And so there is no life that sponsors that activity. You give out of conviction and watch what happens. There are times that your harvest is waiting right there where you are keeping the seed. You drop the seed and pick the harvest. Your conviction can stretch you that far. Are we together? And so people bring their tithes and bring their offerings like a bribe in anger. Hoping that God sees them and hoping that God sees their anger. Lord, I'm dropping, the, if I, I, I empty, it's my account, I emptied now. I hope you are watching. And God says, what is your idea of me? If you being evil, know how to give good gifts. Is it in your Bible? But somebody comes and says, Lord, I trust you. When you give to a rich man, do you cry? When a rich man says, I'm looking for change, you are quick to bring it because you know what will be your reward for meeting a rich man's need. Every man blesses according to his riches in the bank. That's how men bless. Unfortunately, God's bank is called glory. So he supplies your need. Not according to your need. Because sometimes your need is an insult. So he has to supply it according to his riches in glory. Please don't think I'm just motivating you. It's true. It's true. The people that do know their God, when you give from a standpoint of an encounter, that spirit of giving is at work. You understand that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent. It's true. Hmm. You know. You understand a dimension of God that brings favor and you know you are carrying it. You see that? That, that conviction, every time you see people, is as if they owe you. You expect them to respond to the anointing on you. So when you see them looking at you, you know it's working. They are under the influence of something like a charm. They may not know, but say, um, I've been looking for you. Of course you have been looking for me. There is something... That should make that happen. The knowledge of God is powerful. The knowledge of God has monetary value. The knowledge of God is valuable. There are things if you know about God, it will make you know other things about Satan. One of the greatest revelations about Satan is that he is not just that he is defeated is that Satan can be tired. That's a very powerful revelation. Because people faint when they are tired. A man can be defeated and still stubbornly try to lay claims. That's what Satan does. But there is a system that provides weariness to the point that he will even flee. It's a system of resistance. The Bible says resist the devil. You need to know what that resisting is. That there is something a man can do to the devil and you watch him, he watches you and goes. Resist the devil and he will flee. Is, is God speaking to someone tonight? Because we need to come out of this conference full of faith and convictions. Some of you need to run and go back home and say, this is it. I, I wrote my prayer points and edited some out of unbelief. I'm adding them back. I'm adding them back and I'm reducing the time for their manifestation. Because something about the knowledge of God has entered your spirit. Look at what happened to people in the Bible every time they had dimensions of encounters with God. It changed their perspective. Ah! Look at David for God's sake. Look at David. Look at David standing before Goliath. How can a little teenager watch very strong veterans, military veterans, and this young boy comes to serve food and hears a beast roaring, six fingers and six toes, and David laughs. 
He says, God, I know something about you that can throw this man. And then he went to Saul. He told his brothers, the brothers said, return home before we beat the living daylight out of you. And then he met Saul. Saul only asked a question. What tribe and what family are you coming from? And then he allowed him. Gave him spares. And he said, no, no, no. I wasn't trained with this formula. The God I know does not need all of these things. David is standing before Goliath. Remember, you are intelligent. When David stands before Goliath, you expect him to shake. And David is, David is just imagining his testimony. He was so sure. He said, what will be my reward first? They said, one, you will marry the king's daughter. I mean, what a joy. Who doesn't want that kind of stress taken off you? The stress of call, text, will you marry me? Automatically, in one sweep. Please sit down. Number two, your family will be exempted from tax. Number three, you will be rewarded. David said, let's go. And he stood before Goliath. Goliath felt insulted. He said, I know I will kill you, but am I a dog? Israel, is this your best? You, you can't even respect me. And David said, you keep watching. You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in a name. I come to you in a name. Let me tell you, there was a revelation that David knew. James 2.26, that anybody without a spirit backing it is dead. David knew that. That a body is only alive based on the spirit that backs it. The size of the body does not matter. When a body without a spirit stands before you, it's as good as dead. And David looked and said, there is nothing back in this man. Let's stand. I can go. This is cheap victory. And then he told him, he said, Mister, let me even tell you how I'm going to kill you. Number one, you see this link is going to hit your head. Then you'll be on the ground. And then I will use your own sword, cut off your head. And then I will lift it up. And Goliath said, I see. I can imagine God in heaven saying, who is this? Who is this young boy? Putting pressure on my integrity. Listen, I believe. I believe. Now, the Bible does not say it, but I believe. No matter what direction that stone touched Goliath, he still would have died. It wasn't about the accuracy of the forehead. Any part of him. Goliath was already dead. Hallelujah. And Goliath falls to the ground. And that becomes great victory. Your destiny is at the mercy of a dimension of God you know. That's why it matters which man of God introduces God to you. And it matters what he tells you about God. For many of us, we have come from a background, well-meaning backgrounds, but we have um, erroneously been taught certain things about God. I know that God is love. He doesn't just have it. He is love. That dimension is a powerful dimension. Because that is, that is the basis of true freedom. So it gives you the opportunity to replace perfection with sincerity. That in the dealings of God with men, when he says men should be perfect, it does not mean flawless. He means mature in understanding. The love of God is a system that grants you access to enjoy liberty working with him. It's not, it's not a basis for licentiousness, but it takes, away, it takes away the mentality of an angry boss waiting for you to default. The love of God. What do you know about God? And who taught you what you know about God? And what is the result in the life of that teacher? There is something you can learn about God. There is something you can learn about God, man of God. Hi. That will supply such a dimension of the anointing. Let me tell you this. I do not believe there is any mortal man on earth 
that can take my life. It's true. Now, it's, you, you don't have to believe it. I'm just sharing with you. Sorry if I sound arrogant. It's true. You need to know the things that have happened in my life to know why I'm saying what I'm saying. Mm -mm. The same way you see Donald Trump just walking without security. You try to shoot him and see what happens. Use anything, whether a gun or a missile. The military people are not standing there with guns, but you use your initiative to quickly shoot him. And that's when you will know that all you see is not all there is. Number two, I, I believe God loves me. And I truly believe, I, I, I hope I'm right. But forgive me, I believe that God loves me unfairly. Unfairly there, not because he is unfair, but the extent is as if he doesn't love any other person like that. It's true. Look at my life. So when your enemies are angry, have a heart for them. Don't hate them. Understand with them. Who will not be angry? Looking at such a life like this. You see, that revelation sponsors love. You too should be in their position and know it's not easy. To see a man that God blesses anyhow. Anything about your life blesses you. What kind of a life is that? Because I have learned that he's a God that can make all things work together. For the good of them that love him and those who are the called according to his purpose. Are you getting what I'm sharing with you tonight? Please learn these things. I'm doing something to your mind. You will walk out of this meeting with confidence, knowing that I know something about God. When a guy looks at you and you say you are not fine enough, you say, Lord, thank you for taking such an irresponsible boy out of my life. I, I cannot imagine living with someone with such a deconstructed revelation about me. No. Not that you go back and look at yourself in the mirror and say, is it really true? Ah, ah, you mean I'm like this? No. God who did not hide his jealousy for you, his love. Do you know what it means for someone to be in the position of God to come down and say, I love you. You say, Lord, I don't love you. You say, I will wait. What is more ego stinging than that? I will wait for you till you come to me. Then some guy somewhere comes to make your life miserable in the name of love. No, sir. I believe as a man of God that when God empowers you, nobody can bring you down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you have this mindset... You expect to be accepted everywhere. Everywhere. When you hear them say they want to choose 10 people, you start smiling and pray for the remaining nine. It's, it's not pride. It's not pride. It's not pride. It's true. Listen, it is important who construct your belief system. It matters how it is constructed. It matters what about God you are taught. Please listen carefully. Many of us come from many backgrounds just like me. And there are many propositions about God that may be sociologically right. Listen carefully. It may even be from a well-meaning leader, pastor, whatever it is. And now that God has brought you to a very flourishing assembly like this, you must allow yourself to be reoriented. That God gives you another perspective of himself. You will never be able to walk in the anointing if there are some things about God you don't know. I do not believe that any man can meet me and actually make contact with me and his life be remains the same. It's impossible. I don't believe it. 
I have indoctrinated myself by the spirit to know I am a blessing. Are we together now? Yes, sir. Carry that mentality and let somebody sow a seed into your life and watch what happens to him. Even you, you will be surprised and say, you mean I'm disanointed? What did you say happened? You will now sow a seed to your own self to receive that testimony. There's a lot of weakness in the body. A lot of weakness. Spiritual weakness. Mental weakness as a result of something about God that we have been told. If God decides to kill everybody on earth, I'll be the last to die. I know that. Are we together? The anointing, listen. The anointing does not just function vaguely. It depends on these kinds of revelation. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because there is a force. God backs him. Hi. Carry this mindset as a minister. And let me see who closes the door of ministry. Where will it come from? Where will it come from? You produce an album and it does not get everywhere. What stopped it? There is a positive entitlement mentality you need to carry to take your portion in this life. I don't walk in life as if I'm at the mercy of anybody. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Don't sit down wishing to be someone else. No. Because there is something you know about God. God has spoken great things. Man of God, know this God. Know this God. Stand on the pulpit and let that God back you. And you watch the wonder that happens in your church in one month. Not two. One month. One month. Apostle, I don't know where my school fees will come from. As it is right now, I, I don't even know. I agree with you. I'm not inhuman. I agree with you. But let me tell you something. Where did the raven come from that fed Elijah? Is it not in your Bible? Please, let's look at this. It's either we are lying or this thing is true. It may take time, I know. But if it is God, bah. listen some of you are seated here now you don't even know it's like an immersion happening to you you may not know what is smearing on you you will step out of this place and see things begin to change in your life and then you know listen 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 let me tell you how god makes men blessings he makes men blessings by anointing them you are not a blessing if you are not anointed it's true So someone's life is about to be destroyed and you just pass the person. You brought an atmosphere that prolongs his life. He does not even know that's what happened to him. You brought life and ministered to the person. Not formally. You carried an atmosphere that cancelled what would have destroyed him and his family. And he just knows that someone came to buy a bottle of water in this shop. I don't know who. From the time he dropped his hundred naira customers have come because you brought your atmosphere this is what i believe this is what i believe i know there is a god that sits in heaven i know that god can arise and judge the works of darkness i know that I know that when God decides to lift me, let me tell you, there are enough men to use. If you refuse, you will find another one. I know this. Everywhere I travel, I walk as if my estate is there. I expect something to come from that city. HICC, listen, let me tell you. 
if you carry this mentality february will not finish before you start crying for joy and say what is what is happening what is this you will come and meet your pastor and say sir i don't know what happened ah I come from the north and humanly speaking there is a lot of disadvantage where we come from you know i didn't have the privilege of any family to no leverage at all but when god decides to lift you i i said it during the pastor's conference when god points his jealousy at you you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes and you see when people begin to make all those noise you know that this is the doing of god and like an usher you can say god you are the one who deserves all the glory and all the honor someone needs to know something about god tonight somebody needs to know like sinatch will say that he's a way maker listen 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 for you to understand what a way maker is you have to look at Julius Berger when they are constructing a road. There are times that all you see is just a mountain and they smile and say this is where the road will start from and it, they are pointing at a mountain and they are already describing the dimensions of the road and then they bring some high powered gadgets and blow up that mountain and construct roads. So when you say God is a way maker he looks at your life and say this mess this is where the miracle comes out from then it will connect to this one the lord is imparting faith in somebody so that you will believe i came to challenge you i believe god i believe god apostle i've stayed 10 years without admission and then you will graduate and receive the salary of a 10-year graduate no in god's economy time is under his care he can manipulate it anyhow listen that sense of regret that sense of losing take it out of your life take it out of your life take it far out of your life Apostle, I would have been in ministry and I would have done this. There are still 50 members in my church. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. God is able to lift you. Listen, let me speak to someone here who is struggling to get established. Can I tell you this? Reduce the amount of time you are running around trying to look for human connections. No man moves until God moves them. Go to the God that moves men and say, Lord, who is rising? Oh, connect me to that person. Hmm. Apostle, I need land. I've raised one million. Who told you you must buy it? You, you see the unbelief I'm trying to kick out now. Because you too, you see, you've caught yourself disbelieving what I've said. Yet you are in a land where unbelievers have, they believe. Please. Shalakusiata. Have you not read that this God gives us daily benefits? You have received your salary, but where is the benefit? You received your salary from your boss. Where is the one that came from God? I should see the difference between your salary and the one that came from heaven. Listen, the person talking to you is not a stupid person. I'm a leader. I'm not foolish. I know what I'm saying. I'm stretching your faith to believe God. To know that this God is not what many people have said he is. God is a mighty God. Listen, 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 listen. Do you really believe that you will come and stay under this atmosphere and just share the grace and leave? I don't know the God you serve, but the God that came with me tonight in this meeting will so shift your life in a way that it will surprise you.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is the God that we serve. This is the God of heaven. Allow him to start calling your helpers in Lagos and you will be surprised. Allow him to arise as the mighty God that he is. Listen, when you know him, you must also know his power. Listen, God's power is his version of money. If I give you 10 naira, I've given you a possibility that is 10 naira worth. So when you say, God, I need to buy water, he gives you power. Go and convert it. Use it to buy water. On your way to buying the water, you will find somebody who is sick. You will pray for him and he will give you one million. God will say, that's the amount I gave you. The power equivalent just to buy water. One of the things that must happen to you tonight is you must be drenched in the anointing in a new way. Like, like rain pours on someone so that when you step out of here, God will bring ease to your life to take away this hardship so that you can have the time and the focus for the gospel and the things of the kingdom. Insist that this is the year the word of God will prevail over your life. Insist that nothing dies within your vicinity. Insist. Insist. Man of God, insist that this is the year you will see the move of the spirit in your hand. That this is the season that if at all you are invited for any meeting, it will be an effulgence of glory in a strange dimension. Insist that this is the year helpers will rise in strange ways. Insist that nothing you start this year will hang over to next year. It must finish within the same year. Isaac sowed in that year. He reaped in that same year, not next year. Listen, listen, 11 months is too long for God to change your life. You have to believe this. But the people, give us that scripture again. I just sense the spirit of prayer. There are many other things I'll talk about, but I don't know. Proverbs 24, let's go to Proverbs 24 and verse 10. We are going to pray. The Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, what happened? The strength that knowing God supplies. When you know God, even in the days of adversity, you will stand strong and stand tall. Many people, listen, many people chicken out of life and fall in the midst of challenges because there are gaps in our knowledge of God Job though he slay me yet will I trust him all the days of my appointed time I will wait he didn't say perhaps my change comes until I know it's a guarantee it will come and the Bible tells us in chapter 42 and verse 10 that when Job prayed for his friends God restored his fortune give it to us God began to talk to people the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice. How many? How did that happen? Next verse. Let me show you how it happened. It says, Then came there unto him all his brethren. Where were they before? And all his sisters. And all they that had been of his acquaintance before. So they were still alive. But something took them away from him. Now an anointing brought them back. And the Bible says, And he did eat bread with them, and they bemoaned him. And verse 12, They comforted him over this thing, and every man also gave him, talk to me, a piece of money. How many men gave him? Say every. Now that's a realm where every man blesses you. Not your relative. So every man. No wonder his, his favor accelerated him so fast. Every man. Imagine every man in this place blessing you. 
Even if it's 10, 10 naira, your life will not be the same. The Bible didn't say every man blessed him once. I told you favor is not favor until it is continuous. If it happens only once, it is breakthrough. That's not favor. True favor must be repeated again. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Prophesy to someone, say be strong. Yes, this is not the time to be weak. Speak to someone again. Be strong. be strong. Yes, I know you have rent issues, but be strong. Be strong. Be strong. I know you're feeling an, a pain in your body. Be strong. I know something has, I mean, all kinds of tragedies have happened in recent times. But be strong. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hold on. It's not enough to be strong in the Lord. You are also strong in his ability. The power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. If we can have Amplified. I think I remember what Amplified says. Draw your strength from him. Something like that. That you should be strong in the Lord. Amplified says that you draw your strength, in fact, from your union with him. Okay. Is there something like that? Yes. Draw your strength from him. That strength which, okay, be empowered through your union with him. That's right. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Your union with him. Your knowledge you can draw strength. It's true that Jesus died, but was it forever? So when you go down, is it forever? It's, it, no, 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 no. Yes, I know he died, but while they were discussing his death, he had resurrected. Just like others are talking about what happened yesterday. They don't know you are in a meeting now, receiving an anointing that will shift you. They are discussing what happened November not knowing you are in the presence of God about to contact an anointing and a grace that will change your life rejoice not over me my enemies no that you saw me fall does not mean I will remain on the ground I want you to believe that you are here working miracles I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, Waymaker say, miracle walk, all misty. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Prophesy it with understanding in your spirit. Uh, when make a miracle walk. Promise, promise me. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. One more time. When make a miracle walk. Promise me. Light in the darkness. That is who you are. Make a miracle walk. Promise me. Light in the darkness. Last time you went for a meeting, the sick were not healed, and I, you yourself doubted your calling. But watch what God does tonight, Master. We have toiled all night. I went for the meeting like you commanded, I organized the crusade, but there was something I didn't know about you. I didn't see your power flow. But here at One Press 2019, an anointing, a grace coming upon your life that will shift your ministry. The next time you go for that program, like Peter, you cast your net and you will catch such a harvest. Shabakato Seketa. I'd like you to open your mouth and blast in tongues. Shake off the unbelief. Shake off the unbelief. Shake off the unbelief. Hey. 
Outside, are you praying? Our online community, pray. In the name of Jesus, from glory to glory. Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. We are praying tonight. Mm. Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. Look up please. This was the testimony of men who knew God. This was a, a summary of their exploits. It says, when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren to the rulers of the city crying, these that have turned the world upside down. There are a group of people that turned the world, turned their community. Years ago, I saw this scripture and I said I must be part of this list. Do not underestimate what the power of the Holy Ghost can do in the life of an individual. These are they that have turned the world in business. That someone is receiving an anointing here and you will do business in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I want you to believe it. Don't, don't mind that talk of unbelief you hear around you. Listen. Listen, listen, please listen to me. There is no room for anybody in life. Everybody makes his room. You create your space. There is no vacancy anywhere. It is the anointing that pushes and creates your own space for you. They dug a well, Jacob, and then they covered it. Dug another one, they covered it. He dug the third one and they left him and he called it Rehoboth. God has given me my own space. There's no vacancy anywhere in Lagos. It's the anointing that would create space for you, for your company, for your church. You see, let me tell you, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm about to pray for you. Some, something must shift. I came tonight angry in my spirit. Appa! Do you believe what I've been sharing? Please, if you are, if you are a man of God here, I want you to get angry. Get angry in your spirit and tell yourself, no, this is it. This is it. This is it. I, I've, 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 I've come to that moment. Either I contact this thing for real. I, I, I can't be acting as if they are healed or not healed. I, I'm not sure. As if they were blessed or not blessed. No, no. Were you healed? Well, I'm, I'm sure. I, I think. I, no. No. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you in one minute to pray and cry and say, Lord, the grace that will validate my knowing you, let it come upon me this night. There is a grace. There is a grace. There must be an evidence to my knowing you. But the people that do know their God, but the people that have encountered their God, but the people that have a revelation of their God. Shabarakato sadaka shalakuta Embrekato sabaranda shanako sadakata hasya Karako sabando preheteko shaliakata breskata Shakatakate katabarakotos HICC pray 
pray outside pray all those connecting online pray you are about to contact a grace that will surprise you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying. I'd like you to pray and say, Who art thou mountain that stands before Zerubbabel? No one will do the prayer for you. Like David, I'd like you to stand before that Goliath and say, I come against you in 2019. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, lift your voice, challenge every mountain, decree and declare, decree and declare. Here up a shalakato secatebash. Every mountain, every mountain, every mountain. Every high thing must come down, every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Hey, every every eye thing must come down. Every struggle shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. One more time. Every high thing must come down. Every struggle shall be broken. You wear the hallelujah listen last prayer point every dimension you know by the spirit that you need to excel this year i like you to call it into your life right now declare i need favor i call it forth i call forth favor i call forth speed are you praying I call it forth in the name of Jesus. I call it forth by the power of the Holy Ghost. I call for the grace for influence. I call for the grace for increase I call for the grace for explosion I call for the grace for territorial dominion hey, hey, hallelujah hallelujah let me add one more prayer point listen please listen everybody listen to me the bible says that there were ten virgins listen carefully and at the end of the story only five of them got to meet the groom 
It was the delay of the bridegroom that frustrated the five. If the bridegroom came early, all ten will meet him. You are going to prophesy speed. Delay has side effects. All of them started together, but the bridegroom did not come early and it affected five. The same way if your job does not come early, it may lead you into something. The Bible said, lead us not into temptation. One of the ways you lead us not is by bringing the result fast. Lord, let the child come fast. Let the open doors come fast. Speed, speed, speed. Open your mouth and call forth speed. That the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Lest they dip their hands in iniquity. Establish me fast, O God. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick now. We'll do it very fast. But I want to pray for you now. I prayed a prayer in the morning during the pastor's session that the Lord is asking me to repeat right now. There is a grace for speed. Listen, listen, please listen. Hmm. There is an exact grace that brings speed in a life that you do so much within a short time i want to pray this prayer now and i want you to please listen those outside by the roadside just listen every time i pray this prayer and the power of god comes upon people that anointing makes them to begin to run physically not on their own by the spirit and that's why I'm praying. I'm telling you now so that you be careful, so that you don't enjoy yourselves. Please, whether you are an usher or not, when someone begins to run like that, you just guide them and help them. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that if this grace touches you, you will sit back and watch in wonder. I have been surprised myself. It's a grace. It's a grace. Truly, there is a grace like that. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Ha! Something is already happening here. At the count of three, I want to stretch my hands. And I see that grace, my God, like, like an inferno. That grace will shift you and give you such speed in your life. At the count of three, one, two, get ready now. HIC, HICC, three, take the grace for speed. Take that grace now. I release that grace. Speed, help them, help them. Speed that you will run like Elijah and overtake the chariots of Ahab. Those in ministry receive speed. Help them, help them, help them. Grace, speed, 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 speed. I prophesy, I decree and declare. Speed, help this man, help that man, help that man, help that man, please. I speak speed, I command it in your life, in your destiny. In the name of Jesus. I'm praying for you. I'm seeing a grace. A strange grace for visions. 
visions and encounters and i'm seeing a number 43 43 people in this congregation where are they oh god i stretch my hands now i release you into a prophetic realm of strange visions receive that grace now 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 receive that grace now i was by the river sheba then i saw the visions of god i prophesy i decree and declare step into that dimension visions visions by the spirit visions by the spirit it's called a wine press it's time for your destiny to change it's time for something to be shifted in your life just guide that man just just leave him there my friend look at me lift your hands this young man look at me i'm seeing just leave him i'm seeing don't bring it he doesn't have to come out we don't have the time the lord is telling me that you are going to step into a strange teaching ministry i stretch my hands to you right now let the grace that launches men to that dimension come upon you now in the mighty name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ we don't have all the time but listen some things must shift right now before I pray for the sick, we want to shift some things here. That the men in this church become mighty men like David. My friend, lift your hands. The spirit of wisdom is coming upon you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that between now to May, I see the month of May, the Lord is going to shift you to a new dimension. Receive that grace right now. I release that anointing upon you. You will never, never be the same. Never be the same. Spirit of grace, that you step into a supernatural dimension. I'm seeing someone, you are into visuals, like production. You produce something. You have been trying to negotiate a contract with I don't know what company I'm seeing around the island and this thing has refused to work. Next month, February, I'm seeing the people call you in the name of Jesus Christ. How then do you know that God is there? Sir, I don't know you, but the Lord is saying to take hardship away from your life. This man, I don't know. Are you a member of this church, sir? You're a member of this church. Do you believe that if I pray for you, things will change? I want to pray for you. God will surprise you. You are a good man, but... No, it's not, it's not a blessing. Mm -mm, mm -mm. God is bringing strange speed. Madam, this woman, come. Look at me. Do you believe that God can shift you to a new level? Not just financially. I stretch my hands to you in the name of Jesus I shift you into that realm in the spirit a realm of strange favor you will see the hand of God in a supernatural dimension in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there is a gentleman who, who not, may not have all that time to prophesy I want to pray for the sick right now but there is a gentleman I see a very mighty grace coming and hold on hold on the power of God will come on that gentleman it will be a loud shout and manifestation please wherever he is just carry him and bring him to the front here that's not the person that's the man bring him mighty God mighty God the Lord says he's bringing you into a new dimension in the spirit. You may look weak, but he's putting his anointing upon you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, you will take his healing power to nations. 
you will take his healing power to nations i stretch my hands upon you and i decree in the name of jesus let that dimension be activated from within you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ the lord is showing me a very serious businessman here and i don't mean to embarrass you you don't have to come out but i'm seeing somebody from november i don't know what happened to your finances and the thing just plunged down i'm not talking it really went down this thing just went right now in fact it would take god for you to come back up i want you to know that this god we serve is a restorer and if you have the faith to believe then i speak over you and i declare this will not pass 40 days my god will arise and surprise you In the name of Jesus Christ Joseph 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 you are in the choir Joseph Joseph is there a Joseph in the choir Joseph the Lord in this season I don't know you all. what do you do well, I'm seeing you inside a shop and I'm seeing clothes like what I'm wearing what does he do? You sells clothes. He's wait, don't shout. What do you do? That's what I'm saying. You are a what? I'm a fashion designer, sir. You, oh, you sew clothes. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm seeing you inside a shop and I'm seeing clothes. There are three prominent people in this city. God is connecting you with to start making clothes for them. You write it down. You will see it happen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just three. Just three. You don't need many. Just three. They will bring you to their circle of influence. And God will surprise you. I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Bimbo? I'm hearing a name. Bimbo. 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 I think that should be a, 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 a Yoruba name also. Bimbo. Is there somebody with that name? I may not have all the time to speak, but... Mama, you are the one... You are bimbo. Is that what what's wrong with her? Is that your daughter? This is your daughter. Now, what, what she's shouting about is what you are being healed right now from. Is is this is this her is this is she the one that came with this? Bring it. Mama, look at me. Please stand up. Stand up. Come. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Just look at me. Leave her, my dear. Leave her. In the name of Jesus, look at me. I speak over you. I stretch my hands. And I cause infirmity. Now. Are you seeing that I'm praying for you? You see the person reacting? In the name of Jesus, I release you from this plague right now. Help her. Help her. Help her so she doesn't fall. In the name of Jesus, mama, life to your limbs life to your body in the name of jesus christ look at me ma walk go 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 just go carefully you don't have to rush look at me mama lift your legs lift your legs gradually lift your legs look at what god is doing in hicc lift your legs i'm about to pray just turn and walk back mama Turn carefully, walk back, lift your legs. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is the, the daughter? My dear, I don't know what it is, but look at me. I saw the Lord taking something out of you, and I cursed that devil now. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're sick in your body, lay your hands now. I want to pray for you. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. 
I believe Now, wherever you are, please listen carefully. I want you to lay your hands right now where you are trusting God for a miracle. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. I'm about to pray for you right now. I want you to believe. I want you to believe. I'm about to pray for you. Now listen, we don't have all the time. We still have a session tomorrow. But I'm going to rebuke those outside, those by the roadside, the other canopies, and, and then, you know, outside and those connecting, you can connect by faith. As soon as I pray for you, the power of God is going to come upon you and you are going to be healed. The moment that happens, I'm going to give you a chance to check yourself and run out here. We may not take everybody but we need the record. You're going to run out here. We'll take a few testimonies and then we'll round up tonight's meeting. It's going to be a quick one. Listen, I want you to also stand for your loved ones. You can be here, but stand. The centurion stood in for his daughter and he said, you are a man under authority. I am a man under authority and I can tell one go and he will go. Are you ready now? We're going to pray. Death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to agree with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm already praying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every devil of infirmity to leave your body right now I command every my God I command every devil of infirmity just help them to leave your body right now in the name of Jesus now I decree and declare be healed right now I, I sense that anointing is it's like fire it just goes down through your body and quickening you quickening you quickening you be healed right now in the name of jesus every sickness represented in this place be healed now the lord is healing pile i'm seeing the lord heal someone of pile in the name of jesus be perfected now be perfected now I'm seeing a severe chest condition. This, this looks like, um, 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 it looks like ulcer, but it's not just ulcer. Um, it, it looks like ulcers plus something else. The Lord is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. All kinds of lumps and growths are living right now. Living right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone your hip it's like you have a problem with your hip in fact they've, they've tested you and this is something that is a very serious situation very severe pain around your hip here but I command be healed right now please in the name of Jesus Christ every deaf ear here whether partially or completely deaf I command that ear be open now in the name of Jesus Christ every blind eye i command to be healed now i declare be open now if there's anyone on a crutch or who came you brought anyone on a wheelchair right now in the name of jesus i release the power of god upon that person and i command that you begin to walk now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there is someone you cannot lie down on this side of the bed. If you lie down like this, this side, the region of your heart, you will wake up with severe pains in the morning. The power of God is touching you now and you are being healed. In the name of Jesus, 
the Lord is healing hepatitis. I'm seeing the name hepatitis. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There is someone with an infection. This, this, this infection has lingered for a long time. You would try to treat it, treat it, treat it, but it doesn't seem to go. Right now, the power of God is touching you. Right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone, I don't know what you have, your molar. There's severe pain. Severe pain. As I pray for you now, the power of God is touching you right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. You were born with a heart condition. You cannot run or walk for a long time. You have to stop because you'll be palpitating. I declare, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, I, I, this is not a healing issue, but there is someone here. Things have been getting missing mysteriously in your life. This thing started from September. From money missing, your documents, your ID card, things just begin to disappear mysteriously. I command the devil behind that operation to let you go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing, I'm seeing someone, the, the right, your right um, foot, what they call that thing. It looks like muzzle pool. You can be walking and it will just hook you. You have to stand, otherwise the pain can be excruciating. As I'm praying for you, you're going to feel a cold sensation go through your leg. And that will be the end of it. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The Lord is also healing someone of lower back pain. Severe back pain. Severe back pain. I declare be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone you are washing. You were washing and you bent down. And you had a sound like a crack on your back. From that day, you've been having severe pains. I declare be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your right leg usually is like it swells up more than the left leg. This thing happens especially during rainy season. You begin to see an increment in the right leg until you are treated. I don't know who that person is, but the Lord is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, whether I mention your case or not, the power of God is touching people already. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Now, this is what I want you to do. Very quickly, we have just five minutes for this. Now, you check yourself. There are so many people. Some of you, even when you fell under the anointing, something happened to you. I'd like you to rush. Pastor, can, can someone just show them, just direct them? Now, please those outside if they are coming in for the miracles then clear the way for them i just like you to quickly come line up here very quickly right now right here in the name of jesus are you celebrating jesus look what god is doing right now check yourself make your way to the front make your way to the front hicc is this the best you can do god is healing people here just confirm them and we'll take the testimonies right now jesus look what is happening just bring them out there are people outside the power of god is touching them already check yourself some of you may need to run to the restroom if you are coming come out quickly look at what god is doing supernatural miracles by the spirit check yourself check yourself check yourself there's someone you have pains just at the um what they call it now at the base of your feet check it stomp the feet and you find out that God has touched you. Jesus. Look at people coming from outside. Jesus, worthy to be praised. Take it higher. What's that other that song? Creator of the universe. What can you do? 
Are happening in this place. What can you change? Jesus. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Are you ready, sir? Go ahead, quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can the just first, okay. The quickly. first situation that was mentioned by uh, by Apostle was Pearl, and she was just like she had Pearl and miraculous. How long? Give her the mic. How long? Don't give her. Just just let her quickly. My grandmom is currently sick because of Pearl. Your grandmom did what? She's currently sick. She's currently sick and yes. is pile. Yes. Okay. My mom. Your I, mom pile. The mic came on Sunday. And then yours came on and Sunday. Then I told my mom that it came to leave. The devil is a liar. Yes. It will not only leave you, it will leave all of them together. Amen. Give him the mic. Come quickly. Praise In God. In the name huh? of Jesus. Never, someone please come. Never returns to you again. In Jesus' name. Quickly, look at what God is doing. God is still healing Praise people God. right now. Yes, please. Please just turn and face. Since the camera is speaking you, yes. when they come, yes, I quickly. Had, I had fibroid. Then I went to the yes. hospital. They said there was ovarian cyst. Ovarian cyst. And fibroid. When and you also, come up, please just talk as loud as you can. So we. Ovarian cyst, fibroid, and also kidney stone together. Just together. And okay. what happened tonight? <laughs> and I can't feel any pain. In it's gone completely. Ah. Hallelujah. Look hallelujah. at the anointing of the Holy Ghost is still on her. Help her. Help her. Please. Maybe you may need one more person to help you. In the name of Jesus, it never returns. Quickly. Please come. Let them come stand so that we can. Yes, quickly. Quickly, please. I came Don't give them the mic. They usually will take I came time. Here Just with severe pain in my teeth. Severe pain in my teeth. Your teeth. My molars. For how long? months since like December, January. And what happened to you now? I can't feel No pain. It's Hallelujah. gone. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Completely gone. Come, sir. Can we have a gentleman? Let's have both male and female ushers. Come, come. come sir. Come, come. I want to pray for you. I will always seal it. Let's have both male and female ushers so that it makes it very easy. In the name of Jesus. Never returns to you again. Next person. Sir, you just do your work. Just leave the ushers. Yes, please. Quickly. Um, as in my molars, they've been as in, I've been having severe pain for the past two months, and, and this leg, I had a childhood injury. When you were praying, I felt the cold on the leg. That is, I can't feel... Do what you couldn't do. Jump. Is, jump. Jump. For now, I'll be involved in basketball. That is, the doctor said, I shouldn't be involved in sport at all if I don't want the injury to increase, but I'm not feeling any pain. Even it's my gone teeth completely. is free. In the name of Jesus, never returns to you. It's gone forever. Yes, please, quickly. I've been having the molar pain in my teeth for the past four years. Four years? Oh my God. I've been pending my cotton severe headache even just yesterday. I couldn't go to work. You couldn't go to work. What happened to you now? It's gone completely. Jesus, mighty God, never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Praise don't, don't hold the mic. You just stand close to it and he will direct you. Oh. Before 21, this program, I had the intention of starting. So I started praying and I started fasting. So the third day, I discovered I had a serious chest pain here. And it was very severe to the point I went to the back. So yesterday, it got very severe. Because once I wake up in the morning, I'm always feeling the pain every morning. And what happened to you now? When Pastor was talking about it, uh -huh. there's somebody here that has ulcer, deep ulcer. I, I discovered that the back pain went, but I wasn't really sure about the chest pain. So, and I could not lift up my hand. This is it. I could lift it. Lift it now. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, not only is the Lord healing you, the Lord is restoring everything you have lost in Jesus' name. Yes, sir. I'm the man you talked about, uh, Osat pain. I've been having it for more than uh, 10 or 11 years. More than 10, 10 years? Yes, and... Uh, about two nights ago, my wife... Oh, was, our mother. Oh, dear. Two oh, nights, dear. Two, two or three nights ago, I have to rush to the hospital because of that heart pain. You make sure you immediately measure the, the case. I felt something like an electric shock, and I fell on that day. Anointing. An electric shock? Yeah. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody help me celebrate this adorable mother. Look at this. You are able... Great and mighty God, you are able. Jesus. 
this is your mother who is talking now she's talking mommy please talk go ahead I, I came here with a walking stick because my leg for the past 12 months or more, I have sciatic nerve pain on my leg and I have not been able to walk well. But with my name being mentioned, just being mentioned by the pastor, I know that God is doing something in my life. In the name here. of Jesus Christ, you will spend your days in prosperity your years in pleasure we command perfection complete perfection in the name of jesus christ god bless you ma'am oh, you are together with her yes what do you do young lady huh fruit and juice fruit and juice step into a new level of the anointing by the spirit you will not only do fruit and juice, you will be a great woman of God. I release that grace upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you will heal the sick, you will teach the word with power. In the name of Jesus. I speak this upon you and I decree and declare that you step into a new dimension. In Jesus name. God bless you. Yes, please. Last week, Wednesday in the morning, around 6 a.m., I was supposed to take my mom to the hospital. So I don't know what happened. I fell down. Hold my on. kneecap shifted. There is somebody by the roadside. The overflow, just the few people scattered around the roadside. I want you to check yourself. There's something that used to hook you around the neck. Um, sometimes it just, it looks like, you know, the way you swallow bone. Check it now. Outside, you will find out it's gone. Make your way and come. Yes, go ahead. Jesus. Yes, my kneecap shifted. I fell down. It was Your kneecap very shifted. Painful. Yes. And right now, it's no longer. Run. Go. Turn back. What can't you do, Jesus? You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus. Why is mama crying? Talk to us. Please turn. When you come, just turn the camera so that... Um, my mom has always had swollen... Her right leg has always been swollen like a child. For she, how long? Since I knew her. She has always been taking her about it. And now she's been... Now what happened? She can walk... The leg shrunk it's, back. It's, Mommy, run. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. Look at this. Ah, what can't you do, Jesus? You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? Hallelujah. Mommy, what happened to you? When you were mentioning cases, I was lost. I cannot go here and go the same way. Let my case be mentioned. Have you not spoken about somebody that is having pain in the left leg? Have you not said somebody's right leg has been swollen? I just felt a touch. And I felt that I couldn't control myself. And I noticed the pain. Oh, oh, look at this. Mighty God. You see, brothers and sisters, listen. Look at what is happening. In one man's obedience... Is another man's miracle. It is not God you should thank alone. You should also thank your pastor for the obedience of allowing God to use him to produce this. What do you want God to do for your family? Look at me. Look at. Look at. She said, hold her, hold her. She's not running on her own. It's a grace for speed. She prophesied it by herself. She said she wants a new house. You are able. Pastor. Great. Yes, please. We have the case on the road. You just mentioned. The what happened? I'm the one that you mentioned. That you are the one by the road. Yes. Ah, look at this. Where were you standing? Outside, outside the road. You were outside. I'm about going. 
about uh, you are about going yeah. why will you go away from a church like this uh, oh two of them you are by the road come come darling look at this this guy was about going you know angry at god that he came to hicc okay so i've been hold on hold on hold on okay. look at this come 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 for god's sake look at what god is doing who is this one now oh it's a cameraman i was wondering where are you okay go ahead okay so i've been feeling this kind of long where, where are you coming from outside outside yeah. okay so i've had this lump in my throat for about six months and i've done several tests what did they tell you nothing is wrong that's always what i get to hear okay. like nothing is wrong and if you know me too well i used to be like a bit bigger than this no, what I've has lost, happened to you now? And I've lost weight because of that. But then you mentioned that try it, that there's something stuck in your throat. You've not been able. It feels like I should swallow something, but I'm not just able to swallow it. And I tried it like it's gone. It's gone. I was it's actually Amala waiting this night. for you to say something about it. You if I were you, I would eat Amala this night. Deliberately. Are we together now? Sir, I'm interested in your testimony. We have to hurry up, but let, come, darling, just wait, and I'll pray for you. Yes. Anytime that I, I know, I, something will, You were outside. Outside. And then what happened to you? I'm about going. Okay. I, I believe that when you ask us... Are to, you a member of this church? Yes. Okay. When you ask us to touch where... Um, anywhere that is spinning, yes. you understand? I just touched there. Then you pray, and I believe that, oh... Even someone saw me outside, said, are you going? I said, I'm going out. Taking what I yes. about to, you understand? And then when but I gave, I mean, I stand and see the I'm asking question. From there, you mention my case. Okay, let me just come. I, I don't have any any feeling, any pain there. Put anymore. your hand there. In the name of Jesus, it never, never returns to you forever. Come, darling. In the name of Jesus, never returns to you. Yes, please, quickly. Praise God. When I to bed. I've been having pains on my head. I had to bath my hair. Talk on the mic, Most people dear. don't know. I oh, you had my... to bath your hair? Yes. When you gave birth? When I gave birth, I bath my hair. Most people don't know why. Oh, they can't tell me a lot of things because my sister died of it. But I used to have pain in my left side alone. I went to the hospital throughout last year. I was a kid from drugs to drugs. People don't know I used to go to come what, what happened now? They said I had sinuses, chronic, I don't know. Sinuses? Yes, sir. Okay. And wh so, what happened tonight now? You were praying, sir. I told myself that this year, I'm coming. That's year I came with the expectation. Nothing happened last year. But That's I right. said, I must come this year. I left my son at home. And the pain is gone. When you were praying, something pushed me to the back. I don't feel pain. I get run last year. Completely. I had pains in my eyes. Like, nobody knew about it. If I don't tell you, you won't know. But I mean... <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ, look at this. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Quickly. Please, quickly. Okay. Okay. If we take one more, then um, our, our time is exhausted. Just have that guy under the anointing. Now, for all of you, we may not be able to take all the testimonies um, because of time. Maybe there will be one of the personnel who will just note your testimony or will give you another opportunity. Okay, you write them down. Pastor will just direct you on what to do. Let me just pray for all of you who received that miracle. There are a number of you in the name of Jesus. We decree and we declare that it is preserved. Your miracle is preserved supernaturally. In the name of Jesus. What's she eating for? Come again? She's. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know that so many people have received miracles. I apologize. We may not have time um, to share. We still have other sessions. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, may the Lord perfect you. In the name of Jesus Christ. My sister, don't worry. I know you are trying to, you are touched by your, we, we may not be able to allow you share. But in the name of Jesus, I'm touched by your faith. I stretch my hands to you right where you are. In the name of Jesus, let there be perfection for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please rise up. Let me speak over your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Prophecy. 
when done with power we still have a session tomorrow and we'll still take our time to pray for people tomorrow but the prayer I'm praying for you now I'm trusting God with you that the testimony for this prayer will happen tomorrow before the service if you don't have the faith to receive you can drop your hand but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every expectation that you have that must manifest between this night and tomorrow I declare receive it now in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus every activity of angels that must happen this night touching the hearts of men to respond favorably to you we activate their ministry in the name of Jesus there are some of you before you get home you will meet strangers waiting to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare finally for many of you your sleep tonight will be a galore of spiritual encounters in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to wave your hands and give Jesus praise